Hello friends, uh, winter is at the door and we pediatricians are going to see many cases of bronchiolitis in coming few months. So in this video we shall discuss about the recent advances in the management of patients which were encountered and diagnosed them as an bronchiolitis. A bronchiolitis is basically a viral infection of the lower airways you see in infants or, uh, at the most less than 2 years of age. Uh, as I said before, uh, most of the time it's caused by uh, virus or viruses. So, what are the indications of hospitalizing a child with bronchiolitis? So, bronchiolitis theoretically, as we know, is being categorized mild, moderate, and severe based on the clinical situation of the child. But to remember, if a child who is severely distressed, who has extensive work of breathing, whose saturation levels are less than 92% of room air, overfeeding, decreased urine output, or lethargy, all these things are the red flags which tells a physician or the pediatrician to uh, admit the child. Advantages of hospitalizing a child is that you can get to have a close monitoring of the child, his or her respiratory status and whatever interventions needs to be taken can be taken. Apart from that, hydration can be maintained. Also, if patency of an airway like in the form of suctioning or positioning or whatever needs to be done, it can be done if the child is hospitalized. Now we shall discuss the management one by one. There has been many controversies and many confusions regarding the management of uh, bronchiolitis. Uh, we shall discuss each one by one. Uh, coming to the first thing, as I will discuss hospitalization, moderate to severe patients do need to be hospitalized in an ICU. Uh, second thing is about the oxygen. So oxygen, uh, whenever the saturations are less than 91 or significant work of breathing, one has to start a warm humidified oxygen, cold dry oxygen or mist or those things are not uh, beneficial. In fact, it may trigger further bronchospasm. So warm humidified oxygen is to be used. Second point is about the fluids. So basically this child is distressed, these children are distressed and they have uh, decreased oral intake as well as significant insensible losses. So they are volume depleted at times. So you have to hydrate, the hydration has to be maintained, number one. Also these kids are at risk of SIADH and then there's they have hyponatremia and the complications because of that so keeping that thing in mind the fluid which you use as well as the amount of fluid to be used has to be done as per the protocol usually 0.45 or 0.9 uh, dns is what used plus kcl uh, two third restriction is given when you have you, uh, you have assessed that volume of intravascular volume is maintained if you think the child uh, presents to you in a volume depletion state, dehydration, then you have to give a fluid based on that uh, clinical situation. Next therapeutic modalities which we use commonly, all of us do use are uh, inhaled beta agonist like salbutamol, uh, olivosalbutamol. So, uh, if we know the pathology of uh, bronchiolitis, it is not mainly a bronchospasm. It's basically an airway inflammation and leading to obstruction. So, at times, giving nebulization uh, doesn't help. If you think of or if you review the literature, they, they have not been found to be uh, as effective as the uh, as you see in the patients of asthma. However, what uh, most of the units do is they do give it a try of inhaled agonist, beta agonist. If there is an objective clinical improvement in the patient's condition, then one may consider using it. If you are not seeing any response, it is not advisable to continue using every hourly or two hourly because these drugs have their own side effects. So, uh, beta agonist like salbutamol or has to be tried, but if you don't find uh, improvement, do not continue it unnecessarily in very high dosages, which at times in proud of frustration, we do use it. Another thing which is routinely tried is inhaled adrenal adrenaline and a dose of 0.5 ml per kg with normal saline. The theoretical explanation for that was adrenaline causes vasoconstriction and hence reduces the inflammation. 
so again it should not be used as extensively as salbutamol if you see a clinical improvement then one may try using it further otherwise uh, even that adrenaline has its own uh, side effect so uh, give it a try if it is not helping don't go endlessly therapies that are absolutely not indicated are inhaled or iv steroids they have no benefits of it uh, oral or IV antibiotics are not to be used uh, without the evidence of sepsis most as I said before it's basically a viral infection and antibiotics have no role third is chest physiotherapy uh, does not uh, not proven to affect the outcome cool mist therapy has no benefit so do not try uh, these uh, therapies in your patients of uh, bronchiolitis Another therapy which is used is hypertolic saline or 3% saline in the form of nebulization 4 to 5 ml is taken and it is nebulized every 3 to 4 hourly uh, with theoretical explanation of by reducing the uh, airway inflammation it may help but a review of 8 meta analysis of on 3% saline on bronchiolitis found that it does reduces the risk of hospitalization as well as severity however the recent trial does not support that it reduces the stay or the uh, hospitalization rate by 3% saline so again uh, it's a controversial uh, therapeutic modalities to consider if we talk of respiratory support very mild pa mild to moderate patients may require simple warm humidified oxygen with which they get away However, moderate to severe patients with increased work of breathing uh, may require some form of respiratory support, invasive or non-invasive. Uh, recent trials have found that non-invasive support in the form of high flow nasal cannula may decrease the rate of endotracheal intubation, ICU stay as well as the mortality. So HFNC or uh, the CPAP modalities can be used or should be tried but however these things needs to be done in a setup where ICU backup is there and the patients if they are not uh, you know maintaining their saturations or require invasive ventilation those facilities should be available also so this was in brief about the management or different strategies be it oxygen fluid nutrition uh, inhaled agonist beta agonist inhaled adrenaline inhaled hypotonic saline steroids no role antibiotics most of the time no role if it is uh, bacterial or some evidence of sepsis or secondary bacterial infection happening then only it has role uh, apart from that no role of chest physiotherapy uh, that we discussed apart from that respiratory support oxygen your high flow nasal cannula or CPAP or invasive ventilation is what we discussed now coming to the prevention so uh, last but not the least prevention is very important so uh, what are the various uh, things which you can do to avoid getting uh, bronchiolitis so hand washing is very important uh, whenever you have a viral infection if you are touching your patients or your uh, kids uh, hand wash is important avoid going to places uh, in the season where you know a lot of uh, cross contamination may happen Vaccination is important to get your child a flu shot every year as per the schedule. So this is how you may prevent getting uh, bronchiolitis. Uh, thank you very much friends for watching this video from uh, Thinkpedia and uh, from Snake Children Hospital. I am Dabad. I apologize for being a little irregular as I said that we were busy with our hospital inauguration. Uh, a snake children hospital that has uh, recently opened in Ahmedabad. Thank you so much.